the latest Republican congressman to say he won't vote for Trump. He joins a growing list of House members, including, as of today, Ileana Ross Layton, of, uh, who's Cuban American down in Florida, a very conservative woman to an interesting Richard Hanna of New York, who's retiring. Charlie Den of Pennsylvania represents Lehigh, the key part of Pennsylvania. Adam Kinzinger and Bob Dold of Illinois. The list of Republican senators who so far say they're not voting for Trump include, of course, Ted Cruz of Texas, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, Ben Sass of Nebraska. He's the new kid on the block. Mark Kirk, worried about his reelection in Illinois. Jeff Flake, who's one of the stars of the future out in Arizona. And Dean Heller of Nevada. All of them off Trump. Joining me right now is former Republican congressman and House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, who hasn't aged a day since the last time I saw him. There he is. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Anyway, he's also the Hi, author Chris. of Revival, Revolution, Rebirth, a radical call for the, from the former majority leader of the United States. Mr. DeLay, tell us about Trump and how he fits into where your Republican Party was headed when you left it, when you stopped being a leader. What, what's going on in your party? Well, unfortunately, uh, the party is split apart, mainly, and I think this has been said by you and so many others, is uh, the, the type of leadership that we've had in the House and the Senate over the last few years um, has a greatly exasperated a great number of people in the party. And they'll take anybody that will shake up or throw a bomb in right in the middle of, of Washington, D.C., and we're seeing the results of that. The party is split. Um, people are, are all over the place. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the constitutional conservatives are, are in disarray. They don't know what to do. It's, it's, it's pretty dismal. Where would you place Trump in philosophy? He's not a conservative, uh, that's for sure. Uh, he's becoming more and more conservative. I, his speech today was a pretty good speech. I don't agree with him on trade. Um, he's wrong about NAFTA. Uh, but um, uh, it was a pretty good speech, a good, solid Republican speech that I, that I appreciate. And then he had to throw a few things in there like uh, uh, daycare and other things that uh, are unconstitutional. But, you know, um, I, 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 thought it was, uh, I thought it was pretty good, and I think uh, a lot of people will, be, uh, will sigh, uh, breathe a sigh of relief uh, to hear him give this kind of speech. He needs to do more of this all the way through the rest of the election. Well, he's for lower tax, uh, top tax rate. Obviously, he wants to get it down to with 33 percent. He wants uh, corporate down to 15. They're all uh, understandable conservative goals, supply side goals. What didn't you like about yeah. his plan to take a, give you a tax deduction for people who pay taxes? Of course, if you don't get a tax deduction if you don't have any tax payments. If you get a tax deduction for what he called the average uh, child care expense, so you can't go hire some PhD to take care of your kid and charge the whole amount, obviously. But he's saying you can get well, a full deduction. You said that's unconstitutional. Right. What we have been wanting, at least for the last four years, uh, then the election of 12 and, and 14, is people have been calling for a flat tax or, or a consumption tax and get rid of this progressivism in our taxes. He said himself uh, that he's, he's, anybody that makes under a certain amount of money won't pay any taxes. Everybody needs to be paying taxes. Um, and, and, and this going from seven rates to four rates. That's just playing games, and it, frankly, it's playing Democrat games. Um, cutting taxes is very, very important. Uh, trying to figure out how we can stimulate growth is very important, and I, I think he's getting there. But, um, for instance, he never said anything about spending. Spending is so out of control. Uh, you can't <clears throat> cut all these taxes and not cut spending, too. I heard it. He doesn't want to touch entitlements like Social Security and stuff like that. What do you think on a political basis? Can you read the House anymore in terms of numbers? You need 218 to rule. I haven't heard anybody say your party's going to lose the House. Is that a smart bet that the House is there for the Republicans no matter what Trump does? Well, I think, I, I think the House is in, in very good shape. Uh, the members are not running on the presidential election. I think this is going to be a rare election where you have members of the House, at least in their district, will poll more vo votes than the president will. Uh, I think a lot of these Senate races will poll more vote, uh, will pull more votes than the president will. I think I think the, the vote for president is going to be uh, really soft and and low, 
and uh, Hillary and, and, and Trump are going to have to work very hard just to get out their vote. Uh, and right now, Hillary has an up on that because she has an organization and Trump doesn't. So, so all these members and these senators are running their own races, which they ought to be doing. And yeah. they ought to be talking about what they would do when they go into Congress, regardless who is going to be president. It's going to take good, solid constitutional conservatives to stand up to either Trump or Hillary. What about the ethnic thing? You know, back uh, when I was growing up, when I first started paying attention to politics in about the 60s, the black vote was about two to one Democrat. About a third of the African Americans voted Republican. You know, people like famous people, uh, Lionel Hampton and, of course, Jackie Robinson, they're all Republicans, and a bunch more famous people. Will Chamberlain, but there are a lot of famous, well-known people in sports and entertainment and all that we knew were Republican. And then because of what happened in the 60s and Johnson and Civil Rights Bill, it went to about 90 to 10 African-American vote for Democrats over Republicans. And now when I look at these numbers, I just saw a poll recently, it's out there now, that shows that in Ohio, Ohio and Pennsylvania, Donald Trump is getting zero black votes. I mean, it's almost unimaginable. There are not some conservative African-American guys and women out there. Zero. What's that doing to your party in terms of getting a, a fair shake in the, in the black community? Well, we've never really done very well over the last few but years. Zero? But, uh, <laughs> uh, zero, zero is, is pretty bad. Um, but that's the result of a very active uh, primary where uh, some members, including Donald Trump, didn't watch what they were saying yeah. uh, or, uh, or projected the fact that they didn't care. I mean, yeah. how many times did Donald Trump say, say, I don't care if the conservatives vote for me? <laughs> so yeah. um, uh, hopefully that can be turned around a little bit uh, between now and the general election. But this is going to be, as you know, Chris, this is, this is going to be a, a referendum on Hillary or Trump. Uh, right now, the referendum is on Trump, which uh, hurts him. But I, I think Trump is going to be... Because Hillary is so flawed, you can turn that around. I know all about quickly. that, uh, 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 Mr. Delay. One last question: When are the number of Hispanic voters in Texas who are legal voters going to make that state purple and no longer red, and maybe even blue? When's that going to happen? The way you look at the demographics uh, te in Texas, in Texas, yeah. not uh, Hispanics are a lot of Hispanics are Republican in Texas, yeah. particularly though. You don't see that state turning owners, and becoming. Uh, you don't see the state of Texas getting to be competitive. No, not at all. Not for a while. <laughs> okay, boy. All It'll my progressive <laughs> friends are hoping it moves faster than you think. Anyway, Tom <laughs> Delay, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. My and pleasure, by the way, Chris. You gave me the scoop when you quit. I'll never forget. I like scoops. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.